Lindhurst High School project and the elementary school project, including the four lower schools, Columbus, Franklin, Washington, and Rosedale. The high school project was broken into two phases. The first phase, which included upgrades to the media center, was put out to bid in the early spring of 2018. This portion of the work was completed in August 2018. <laughs> first phase of our high school project was completed. The second phase of the high school project, which includes STEM classrooms and health and career classrooms, has not been bid at this time. The elementary school project was put out to bid at the same time as the high school project. However, the bids came in over the board's budget and were rejected. In the summer of 2018, while work was ongoing, by the architect to revise the elementary school project, the state monitor, Mr. Egan, was assigned to the board to review all the board's finances. The elementary school project was part of that review. At this time, the board lacked sufficient funds to complete the project as originally specified. The board has convened meetings with the design professionals bond council, the board's auditor, the state monitor, and legal counsel to explore options available to achieve the completion of the elementary school project. It is the board's goal that the funds available be dedicated to this endeavor in order to meet the intent of the referendum without the need of additional funding. The design professionals are currently drafting options for the board's consideration. The board will, reviewing those, will be reviewing those options within the next three to four weeks. Going forward, the board will provide updates on our website for the project as they become available so the public is informed of the board's progress. The board is dedicated to the students and staff of our schools. We understand the burden of this delay that this delay will place on all involved. The board is looking to work with everyone so that we can complete this project with benefit of our most important asset, the students of Linder. That's our current statement. This will be posted on our website by tomorrow. And going forward with the options that we will be receiving, we will make sure that our community is involved in the process. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're also going to be recognizing the student uh, in a 
Board of High School students. We went a little bit out of order. I just want to update everybody here tonight on some things um, that have happened. We haven't had a uh, meeting for a while um, for action items, so um, there hasn't been a lot of this that uh, happened since then. Um, uh, recently, we put uh, a message out about the Washington School uh, update from the Department of Environmental Protection. That was on our website for about a week. Um, I still have the copies available electronically if somebody missed it. Um, those results came out positive uh, for students and staff. Um, they're going to continue to monitor the situation and pass them on to another agency at this point. Um, but the building is safe for occupancy as it has been. So then those, those results were posted and I appreciate or answer any questions that I can. Um, recently, uh, QSAP, which is basically um, a requirement by the uh, Department of Education that holds us accountable for different areas. Um, the one area that um, we haven't uh, passed yet, instruction and program. Um, they visited the uh, district not that long ago, and we're looking forward to positive results. Um, our staff members, uh, teachers, support staff, uh, principals, our directors, or supervisors have all been working very hard um, to pass that area. I know that this process started probably two years ago, and we're, we're continuing towards a good path. I think we're going to have positive news very soon. I um, want to make an official that we'll get that and share with the public as well. Um, tonight there's also a rec uh, recommendation to finalize the memorandum agreement with the uh, Winters Police Department, who I have nothing to praise for in my short time here. Um, they've been very helpful uh, to me and obviously to um, the staff and our community in general. Uh, they're very helpful in every way possible. Um, and I really want to make them say positive things. They, they go so above and beyond uh, the call of duty for them. It's very appreciated. Um, so the memorandum of agreement is just something that every district has to enter into uh, with the local police department. They're a governing body that's you know, more than one town and a school district. You know, to make sure we're on the same page. And, and it's mostly, you can't really change anything in it. Um, it's basically what the state tells you. It's basically a template that you have to follow. But they do require you to formally meet. Um, and we've done that, and we'll continue to meet with our administrative staff and have uh, our way down the table soon when everybody is available. So I just wanted to kind of update everybody on that. Safety and security obviously is at the forefront. You know, it's probably, it is our main concern um, for everybody. So um, we, we are aware of that we, we do share the same belief and hope and the parents are, are very involved in that too. So okay. um, on a lighter note, um, our winter season has been underway for more than a month. Um, our team is doing very well. Um, we're also uh, performing the Wizard of Miles here. Uh, I think it starts February 14th. Is that Thursday? Uh, Thursday, February 14th. So come out and see that. Uh, that'll be very good. Uh, as you know, we'll be doing our order presentation tonight, uh, and also now I will turn it over to Ms. Miller, our high school principal, who will be recognizing a student at the high school um, for a great achievement. I'll let her speak a little bit more in detail about it. We're very proud of her accomplishments.
Uh, she plays a key role in FDLA, which is the Future Business Leaders of America, and was a member of the month in September. Um, what's even better than that is her teachers and administration know that they can count on her all the time. Um, and that's one of the really nice pieces of feedback that I got from your teachers today, because I did pull them a little bit. Um, so I do want to just mention that uh, she did, she was recognized, um, she won several awards and you know, six certificates and also a scholarship uh, through an essay contest. It was for the 90th birthday observation of Dr. Martin Luther King, sponsored by the Martin Luther King Junior Birthday Committee. And the objective of the committee is to recognize senior students from Bergen County, both public and private high schools, whose academic achievement and community service truly exemplifies the ideas, ideals of Dr. King. Um, they also received certificates of merit, commendations from the New Jersey State Legislature and Bergen County officials. Uh, so it was really great achievement. She was recognized throughout the county and the state, and we wanted to just make sure that we recognized her here at Lenhurst as well. So congratulations to you. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good evening, board members. Uh, I'm here tonight to present the audit uh, for the year ended June 30, 2018. Um, our report is dated January 23rd, 2019. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is review the financial position that the district ended the year um, as of June 30th, uh, 2018. After closing the books, recording all the liabilities, um, recording all the commitments and uh, funds that were required to be restricted, um, the district ended the year June 30, 2018, with an unassigned budgetary fund deficit of $4,470,851. Approximately $4.5 million. Um, in addition to the results of operations, um, our report has several findings and recommendations in it, um, which can be found in the synopsis of audit. Uh, we have 30 uh, recommendations as a result of our uh, findings in the audit, uh, six of which are material weaknesses in internal control procedures, the most serious. Also identified seven significant deficiencies in internal control procedures, also serious, um, but not as serious as material weaknesses. And then 17 uh, general findings. Um, as I go through the report, I'll identify uh, which ones are considered material weaknesses and which ones are considered significant deficiencies. Um, under financial planning, accounting, and reporting, um, the first recommendation, which was identified as a significant deficiency, um, revolved around uh, confirming orders, meaning um, orders placed and goods uh, ordered that were not 
as a result of an approved issued purchase order. The purchase orders were issued after the fact, after the actual order was placed, or after the service was rendered. Therefore, the purchases were not approved in advance and recorded in the records uh, prior to the goods or services being rendered. Obviously, uh, this is a significant uh, deficiency in the internal control procedures. All purchases should be approved prior to them being ordered, um, and the purchase order issued based on an approved order and recorded in the records. Uh, the second item, which was a general comment, in processing uh, purchase orders for payment, uh, we noted several instances where receipt of good signatures and approval signatures on the vouchers were not present uh, when these uh, purchase orders were processed for payment and checks were issued. Um, every purchase order that is processed for payment is required to have a receipt of goods signature, someone certifying that the goods were received, and someone approving the payment of that, meaning that they went through that purchase order and only appropriate documentation. Uh, was attached to that purchase order for payment. Um, recommendations three through eight uh, dealt with payroll. The first one was a significant deficiency um, related to funds that were transferred from the uh, summer savings account into the operating account to pay bills uh, because of a cash flow issue. Um, these funds are maintained um, in trust, the board is acting as a fiduciary agent. Uh, money should not be borrowed from those funds and transferred to the operating funds to pay, pay bills. Um, that practice uh, in the future uh, must be prohibited. The next item dealt with pension reporting. Uh, we had uh, retroactive salary payments in uh, December of 2017. Uh, those retroactive salary payments Require, uh, to be reported to the state separately uh, for pension purposes. That report was not prepared and issued to the state at the time of our order. That needs to be uh, completed. The next item, which was also uh, identified as a significant deficiency related to uh, the calculation of employee contributions towards their health benefit coverages. Um, in the Auditing what they call Chapter 78 uh, contributions from the employees. We noted that the premiums used to base the employees' contributions were not based on the current uh, premiums in effect as provided by the risk manager. Um, it appeared that those premiums were not updated for several years, um, and therefore the employees were not paid at the required amounts under Chapter 78. Uh, the next recommendation, item six, dealt with the payroll registers. Uh, those are the payroll check registers uh, of the employees that pay. Um, those registers have to be signed and certified uh, by the superintendent, board president, and board secretary. It appears that procedure uh, was not being followed uh, during the year. And item seven deals with uh, the district's Position control roster. It, the position control roster is a complete roster of all the positions in the district. It identifies the employee in that position, their salary, the uh, budget account number they're assigned to. Also, will provide uh, benefit information. Um, this document is used for budget purposes. It should be tied right out to the budget as well as the payroll system. The position control roster, which is integrated with the budgetary and payroll system, was not updated uh, in several years. Therefore, it was not accurate, it was not in agreement with the budget, it was not in agreement with the payroll records. Um, the district did maintain an Excel spreadsheet, however, it's not integrated to the other two uh, accounting systems. Item A uh, deals with uh, eligibility of employees uh, enrollment in the pension system and perform the order of salaries. 
uh, we noted several employees who appeared eligible for enrollment in the state pension systems. That's the PERS system, the TPAF system, and the DCRE uh, P, uh, system. Um, it appeared these employees were eligible um, and should be enrolled in that system um, as soon as possible. Um, late enrollment in the system could result in penalties um, and charge, interest charges to the district. We need to review all our employees, including part-time and substitute teachers, for um, their eligibility for enrollment. Next item, uh, nine, was a material weakness. Um, dealt with recording unpaid bills at the end of the year, at year end. Um, in performing the audit, um, we noted approximately uh, a little over $1.8 million of bills that were not either recorded to the right year or uh, as an outstanding bill or not charged to the right year when paid. Um, the majority of that amount, over $1.6 million, resulted from open liabilities, open um, claims as of June 30th of 2017. Um, there was an additional 200000 that related to June 30th of 18. All those bills were recorded in the proper years. The financial statements were restated uh, for uh, the beginning balances to reflect the $1.6 million that should be recorded in the prior year. And then the 200000 related to this year was recorded at year end. And it's included in the deficit that I mentioned. So if that was an interior weakness. Item 10 is a significant deficiency um, related to the monthly board secretaries and treasurer's financial reports of a, for the period of December through June, of December 17th through June of 18. Those reports were not submitted and approved by the board. Um, I think there was some confusion by the administration uh, because the district was in a deficit and a non-deficit, and the administration did notify the county as they are required to do of the deficit. Um, the, those reports on a monthly basis still should have been presented to the board um, and approved uh, as being submitted. Um, the board nor the business administrator at any time could have certified that there were sufficient funds or that there were no over expenditures um, in the, in the uh, financial statements, but at the very least they should have been submitted and approved by the board the reports. Item 11, uh, material weakness regarding the issue of ending the year in a deficit. Uh, as I indicated before, almost $4.5 million. Um, there were 25 budget line items that were overspended during the year. Um, the total budget for the year of 17-18, um, after making the corrections for the, the bills that should have been back to the prior year, um, the overall budget was overspent about $960,000. Um, obviously, our recommendation there is that the district must implement, develop and implement, and put corrective action, uh, corrective action plan in place to ensure deficits and over expenditures do not occur in the future. We need to put procedures to monitor the finances to make sure these things don't Item 12 and 13 uh, relate to the 2016 referendum project. Um, in reviewing the records, um, of the budget records for the referendum project, the July 1, 2017 balances that rolled forward, reflecting what was available to spend in that project, were understated um, approximately $7.8 million. In other words, if you looked at the report, it looked like you had $7.8 million less to spend. The reality was the, the, the balance rolled forward incorrectly. In addition, the budget was not set up properly, and the appropriate line items 
uh, as was in, in the detailed documents of the referendum. Therefore, we have to get the, the balances correct rolling forward so we know exactly what is needed to, is available to spend, and the, the monies have to be put in the proper budget line items so we know uh, where the funds are available to spend. Item 13, again, deals with the referendum, uh, and it deals with procedures regarding the awarding of professional service contracts um, and amounts and amounts that are encumbered into the records. In reviewing the expenditures of the capital projects, uh, we noted that the professional contracts that were being charged to the referendum project were not approved by resolution of the board. And therefore, because they were not approved by resolution of the board, there wasn't a purchase order issued for the amount of the contract, then therefore the, the contracts were not encumbered. And as we talk later, um, under purchasing, uh, the purchasing program, um, there are issues that come up as material weaknesses related to purchasing in general, which I will discuss. Item 14, under financial planning, accounting, and reporting, um, as part of the audit, we, we, we uh, review compliance with travel expense reimbursements. Um, these are state guidelines that are adopted by board policy. Um, and under that policy, uh, prior to being reimbursed or at time of, of reimbursement, a report must be filed by the individual indicating the purpose and relevant relevancy of the conference or convention or workshop they attended that the board paid for. Um, there were instances where those reports were not provided uh, for review of the board. Um, in addition, uh, there were uh, conferences where the actual conference as well as the individuals attending that conference were not pre-approved uh, by board resolution. Um, those actions must take place prior to the conference and the individuals attending those conferences. Item 15 deals with our federal grants. Um, the federal grants reimbursements, requested reimbursements from uh, the state for federal grant expenditures. Uh, we noted that reimbursements were requested for expenditures that did not take place. Um, you cannot request expenditures that take place in the far future, or near future for that matter. Um, we noted there was about a half a million dollars of reimbursement requests made in January of 2018 for expenditures that did not take place until May of 18 and September of 18. Uh, the general rule is if the expenditure is not paid within three days of the request, you cannot request those funds. You cannot basically borrow money from the federal government. School uh, purchasing program, the area which without question needs the most improvement, um, an area where we had six recommendations, of four of which are material reasons. An area that must uh, record action must take in place. Um, the first area that dealt with expenditures and purchases and contract awards that are over the bid threshold. There are certain procedures that have to take place when expenditures are over forty thousand um, dollars. In certain instances, they have to be publicly bid. Public bid must be sought. Um, in certain cases, if they're exempt from bidding, such as state contracts or cooperative purchasing contracts, uh, the board has to still approve those contracts, and documentation must be on file in the district to support that bids were made, uh, publicly advertised for, and received, that state contracts exist and are on file with the state, and that these cooperative purchasing agreements um, are on hand in the district files, and they are eligible type purchases. Um, in performing the audit, this documentation 
was not available in many instances, and therefore we could not count um, in many of these instances if the board complied with the public school contract law with respect to bidding. In the same token, uh, quotes, which are expenditures which exceed $6,000, um, there were many instances um, where you have to solicit quotes. Um, there were many instances where quote documentation was not attached to the purchase. You have to require to have two quotes attached to the purchase order. Um, we prefer you have three, but there was no documentation that any quotes uh, were solicited for many of the items that required such quotes. That was also a material weakness. Item three under uh, the purchasing program is also a material weakness and deals uh, with when the board approves a contract by resolution. Um, we noted in many instances that the board when they approved contracts, did not always attach the dollar amount of the contract or a not to exceed amount of the contract. Um, they call that almost an open-ended contract. Um, all contract awards have to have an amount, either a certain amount for, this, for the project or for the service, or a not to exceed amount. It cannot be an open-ended contract in one Also material needs. Item four is a general comment on certain expenditures over a certain dollar amount uh, require a political contribution disclosure form, anything like a 17.5, and a business registration certificate if you're over the throat, crush, throat quote threshold. Um, in many instances, um, that documentation was not on file and available. Item five, also a considered, considered material weaknesses involving around purchases of professional service contract awards. Uh, professional service contract awards do not require public bidding. Um, however, when those contracts are awarded, uh, that award, that action, must be advertised in the newspaper where the board advertises that they awarded such a contract as a professional service contract that was not subject to bid, what the, who the vendor is, what the service is that he is performing, and what the dollar amount of that service is, or the not to exceed it. Um, for the year of audit, we found no documentation um, that, that those advertisements uh, were made after the awards were approved. Item six is a general comment. Um, in many instances, uh, we did not have written contracts for professional or consulting services. Um, in many instances, we, because the resolution did not have an amount, or there was never a resolution, and the fact that there was no contract on file or even a proposal, um, it was virtually impossible to tell how much was supposed to be paid for the services or what the hourly rates uh, were agreed to for the services being provided. The next item is a general comment on the school food services. services uh, school food services um, are performed by a food service management company. It's a third party that administers the cafeteria. Um, and in reviewing the collections uh, made in the cafeteria, uh, we compare the daily sales report to the monthly sales reports. Um, and in, certain instances there were minor discrepancies between the two but in reality there should be no discrepancies as they both come from the same system um, the daily reports create the monthly reports that should be the same um, we need to view this with the food service management company to make sure that they reconcile the differences and get an agreement 
Uh, in addition, uh, some of the days we selected for audit, those reports were not made available uh, and provided for us here. They need to all be available for us. Next area is student body activities. Um, these are activities that are run for the school clubs, school organizations, and school athletic teams. Um, it's a kind of a decentralized type uh, operation. It's usually uh, handled by the principals and teacher advisors to the clubs. And the business office does not really get involved in the day-to-day -day daily transactions of those clubs. Um, we have five recommendations under there. Uh, the first one is that uh, we need to put in a standard uh, uniform deposit accounting form and pre-numbered receipt tickets to provide a better audit trail of monies collected and deposited for the various clubs. Um, in addition to that, um, deposits that are from multiple students for like field trips and class rings and yearbooks, um, there should be a list provided with the deposit or the deposit accounting form of what students actually pay to provide a better trip. There were instances where those lists were incomplete or were not done at all. Number three, uh, dealt with an instance um, where we were auditing a deposit and on further review uh, determined that the money that uh, was for this deposit was um, taken from a lockbox lock that was maintained um, in the business office. Um, obviously, um, it, we need to improve um, safeguards over the availability and who has access to these funds. Um, it was approximately $151 of uh, monies that appear to have been um, taken from the lockbox. Um, Item four. Uh, in reviewing the financial transactions of the student activity accounts, we noted transactions that were not student related and really should not be accounted for in there. Um, they were things like donations for scholarship awards, uh, grants, recycling grants that should be accounted for in the general operating fund, um, fees and fines that are collected. Um, by the district, however, they're collected at the school and then they're deposited in, into the student activity accounts. Um, all these types of, of activities, grants, scholarship donations, um, and fines and fees should all be occurring in the general operating account um, of the district, not in the student activity account. And then finally, a review of disbursements. Um, Reveal that uh, similar to purchases and disbursements made uh, by the district in the general accounts, there is a purchase order voucher approval form. Um, these forms are used to indicate what's being purchased, what club it's being charged to, um, and what the amount is. Um, it's signed, has to be signed as approved for payment. In many instances, there was no approval payment, but the payment was made. In addition, uh, invoices to support the payment were not attached. Every payment needs to have a vendor invoice to support uh, that it's a eligible student activity expenditure. From the transportation, um, had some differences with our transportation report, which is called a DRTRS report, and it's a, a census report of students who are eligible to um, eligible for the district to receive transportation state aid. Um, in auditing that census report, we noted uh, several students who were reported as eligible 
who are actually ineligible and should not have been reported for state aid, as well as students who are misclassified between regular ed and special education. Um, we need to improve that reporting there uh, as, as well. Finally, uh, facilities and capital assets. Uh, we have two recommendations. The first one is the material weakness pertaining to the district accounting records for district-owned land and district-owned buildings. A part of our financial report and certain financial statements in the report report on the statements the values of the district's land and the value of the district buildings as well as the depreciation of the buildings. There are no records in the district detailing what makes those numbers up. Uh, therefore, it, we cannot uh, verify if, number one, the values are correct and that they're based on applicable accounting standards. Um, that is considered the material weaknesses as there's no backup to those numbers uh, and those numbers are reported in the report. Um, in addition, and finally, uh, the last recommendation, which was a general recommendation, um, dealt with uh, the district's accounting of equipment. There is a detailed accounting of equipment. The equipment's tag ties out to the uh, financial statements. Um, however, the capitalization policy is $2,000 for each individual item, but it appears the district is capitalizing things as low as two or three. Dollars, um, so the district has to make a decision either to change the capitalization policy or stop capitalizing uh, assets that are not do not meet that policy. Uh, that concludes my report. Um, again, 30 recommendations, uh, six that are material weaknesses, um, which are serious, and seven which are significant. Also, um, a series of recommendations. That's my report. If anyone has any questions for Jack while he's doing his report, please come to the podium um, and it will be all audit related on what he just reported on.
what was added to that deficit was $1,739,486, which was the result of the current year operations. That's how we get the four million four seven. The one million seven thirty nine is the result of revenues that came in short of approximately one hundred twenty nine thousand. The budget that was overspent by about nine hundred sixty thousand. The district had a reserve a little over three hundred thousand dollars for disallowed grant costs. Uh, for the Title I audit that is currently under appeal, but they have to set that money aside because they will most likely have to pay, if not all of it, most of it. Um, and that has to be set aside and restricted. Um, in addition, um, we had to set aside another $350,000 of commitments that are made um, that although we don't owe people the money, the commitments have made and we will honor them in the future. That also has to be deducted. So when you add all these pieces together, the deficit ends up at a four million four cent. So you will be paying back contractors that the board didn't pay? No, no the contractors will pay. We will be paying back the state of New Jersey basically the loan of four million four and a half million over a ten years. Okay, so we're going to be paying back the state, but for the deficit to happen meant that we didn't pay $4 million worth of bills, correct? We incurred, we either paid or we incurred bills of $4 million. Five. Which one were paid? Uh, some of them were paid. Some were paid now, but they weren't paid then. They, they were paid, some of them. Okay, and the other thing you have here under the capital projects fine, one million eight hundred eighteen eight eighty. Now, what is that deficit for capital projects? That uh, uh, the state of New Jersey does not recognize that as a deficit. It's an accounting issue um, because the district has not permanently financed the referendum, which was approved at roughly twenty million. Um, we cannot realize a revenue until the bonds are actually sold. So there is a reconciliation in the report, um, and the state does not recognize that as a deficit. That's an accounting deficit, but it's not a budgetary deficit. Okay. Um, so then we're only responsible for paying back to 4.4 million over a 10 year period, which would be about how much a year? And so, in tax wise, that's like a half point. And then, just curious about how much the taxes will go up on the school board, knowing that is the cap still involved? So, is this a debt that goes on the outside of the cap? It's subject to the cap. It's to the cap. Even though it's a, a debt, it's not on the outside of it. It's considered an operating expense. Okay, now when we talked about the referendum and the stuff, I was just curious, though, if the school board has written legal documents of um, Lincoln School being transferred over to the town. That was part of what was going to happen with a referendum. Is regular Board of Education members' um, procedures that they're supposed to follow when they weren't really doing all this? Who was totally responsible to look after this to make sure it didn't happen? That there were purchase orders, that there were vouchers, that they did this, that they signed off, and everything that you mentioned is not the new. This has been school board procedures for years. So, who in the school board is responsible? Is it your attorney? Is it your Superintendent, is your business administrator like who tells board members you're not following this? Once again, this is outside his purview, and I'll address it when I get my board report. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so how are you doing, Giovanni Gashion? Uh, you mentioned something about the political contribution of 17 to the five. What is that, and how? 
was there an amount actually? Uh, when, a, when a purchase or a contract uh, is entered into that has not been publicly advertised for bid, and the amount exceeds 17.5, there is a document that that vendor has to complete to uh, record any reportable. So it was just because it wasn't publicized. Because it was it was a non what they call a non fair and open purchase. Okay.
The answer is I want to have a resolution to back up the dollars that are being spent as the attorney. I'm not the auditor. As the attorney, if you had a no bid contract uh, because it was underneath some threshold and you're going to exceed a threshold, you certainly would want to have a public board resolution. Unfortunately, the way the public contracts law works, if you're going to exceed that $40,000 number that Mr. Bliss refer, referred before, um, in the aggregate over a year, you're probably going to be back with an audit exception if you didn't bid it in the first place uh, because that would be considered against one of the statutes that were cited here. Um, but there are other no bid contracts, and I'll use myself for example. Professional service contracts are subject to an RFP process. Uh, in fact, one of the exceptions talks about the public service, uh, professional service contracts weren't advertised. One of the reasons for the advertisement is so you have an understanding of the fact that the board awarded a contract that wasn't bid conventionally, as we understand under public contracts law, but then the public has an understanding of what you're spending your money on. For example, whether it's an auditor, as Mr. Bliss is, or an, uh, an attorney, as I am, then you have to publish those. So, and those can exceed the $40,000, um, but typical auditor attorney fee bills uh, appear on monthly bill lists and are not necessarily capped. It's actually an exception to public contracts. Mm -hmm. So, it depends on the type of contract you have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so professional service contracts, you may not have that issue, although you might end up, <clears throat> Mr. Bliss and I might have a conversation in the district where if the amount for a professional service exceeds what's in the budget, there might be an issue there. Um, but on non-professional service contracts, uh, my recommendation, my legal advice to the Board of Education would be you need to back up the expense. First of all, you should have had an not receipt number to begin with, and then you need to back up the additional money with a resolution and be, be mindful of the Board of Education if you exceed a certain dollar figure in the aggregate of a year, you might end up with Mr. Bliss knocking on your door about that because that would be a, a problem with the public contract. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
seems a little unfair to us. Um, okay, my next question is food service. Every month I see that on our bill list. Is that something that's big? Yes, it's, I think it's competitively contract food, which is similar to bidding. Um, you don't have to take the notice. Yeah. Okay, because it seems like that's a very huge expense to the district. And it seems to me that my daughter's here at the high school that a lot of the kids go out to lunch. So I don't really know where all that money goes. It's just a good question. Um, my next question, maybe this is my last one. I used to do the DRTO report with the South Urban Georgia Commission. How much money did we lose by not properly sending in the correct students? Specialize a lot of money in transportation. Yeah, I can't quantify that and come back and look at it. Um, the reality is with the state is the state hasn't increased in, in years. It's been flat funded. Can't answer that question at this time. Okay, so my next question is anybody who was on the board during the deficit, are they not a conflict of interest? Shouldn't they be removed from the board during that investigation? Yeah. Again, and, and I'm and I'm the the reason there's a forensic audit after the issuance of a check of four point five million dollars is to have some understanding of, of what happened. But a lot of the questions that everybody's asking. The question you're asking is, once we have a determination as to what happened, can action be taken? And the difficulty I think the Board of Education would have is saying, is committing to you that they would go after a board member or a business well, administrator. Well, have a problem saying that because it's their responsibility. There's nine people responsible for these things, and they're not doing their job. It can pass one, maybe two people, okay, I get it, but nine? And no. then they're gonna still sit here and make decisions? No, but like I, my money. That's my money. That's everybody sitting here money. hundred percent. Not there. Not theirs. Uh, what I would say is that the board of education members are taxpayers as well. Uh, what I would also say though is a lot of the issues in the audit, um, 
whether, you know, Board of Education member is not going to review a travel request and is not, in fact, it's not their role to go and check that the widgets were del delivered to the high school. That they can't do that. Uh, the ethics rules preclude them from doing that. Now, they are fiduciary trustees, so they are responsible for ensuring the protection of these assets and this budget. Um, but without having the understanding of the outcome of a forensic audit, it's very difficult to answer a question as to whether a Board of Education, whether an individual violated whatever their responsibility is to the scope of, of a $4.5 million deficit. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard. There's a president, right? Well, uh, the president doesn't check the widgets at the We're not talking about, like, 50 bucks here, 50 bucks there. Certainly not. Like he said, misspending $151 out of a lock box, a lock box, that's stealing. We're talking about legal issues here. Somebody needs to be held responsible instead of us constantly paying. We're paying taxes, we're paying taxes. Our kids aren't get, even getting a good education. They're in crappy buildings, they're falling apart. Kids are getting sick from the buildings. This is totally unacceptable. The public should be able to request those people to resign or step down. Honestly, they should be mad enough to just step down themselves. Well, good evening again. Uh, it, it was a very sobering report that the, uh, the CPA Jeff Liss uh, compiled. Um, he's an excellent uh, firm. Uh, they were told to find everything, and they found a lot. When they found everything, and I, I, I don't know, but they, they did find a substantial amount. The one thing, uh, and there are things wrong, you know, there's no question about it. Uh, the district is facing a $4.5 million deficit, and we're going to have to rely very heavily on the state to, to make that money up to make us whole. But the one, uh, one item that, uh, or aspect that I took uh, hope on was that everything he described here uh, can be fixed almost immediately. Everything he talked about, the, the, the deficiencies, was a lack of control and documentation uh, with the books and records. And all of that can be changed very quickly. In fact, more than half of these findings have already been corrected. So by the end of this, this year, by June 30th, we'll have, a, we'll have a, all the serious ones, definitely. Fixed. So we're not going to go into deficit again. We're, we're, we're turning the corner and going forward. You have something else going for you, in, in, in my opinion, as an outsider, uh, in Lindhurst. Uh, and that's your governing body in the town. Uh, I never heard it before, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I never heard it before that the governing body, in your case here, the commissioners, voted to build a school uh, in the town, furnish it, and when it's all done, just come to the board of ed and hand us the key. That saved, that saved school taxes tremendously. Um, in, in addition, you should be aware, uh, representatives of the board, including myself uh, and the architects, approached the, the, uh, the council, the commissioners, and ask them to re basically reconsider the configuration of the new school from a junior high to a pure middle school. And they, and they just, it, 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 didn't, it didn't take a tremendous amount of persuasion. They listened to us, 
They heard us, they said absolutely. Part of the results of that, besides of the educational uh, <coughs> positives to it, was the, um, the impact on the elementary schools. By taking the sixth grade out and moving it up to the new building, it, it, it created an opportunity for a tremendous number of uh, opportunities for new plans and new designs for how to spend the, the funds available from the referendum. And as, as the president here said, uh, we are actively uh, studying the options and that progress will be presented on a regular and timely basis uh, to the public as to, as to how we're proceeding. But our goal is to uh, have the remaining amounts of money uh, expanded in such a way that uh, we make the elementary schools a much better place. Uh, the only other thing uh, that I do want to say, which, which troubled me then from, from Linux, uh, and uh, if it's wrong, it's wrong, and I don't, I, it's part of my nature, I have to address it. One of the things here, we're circulating in the, in the media, and the uh, social media and the press uh, about attacks and comments about uh, some of the uh, members of the commission. Uh, I found no wrongdoing uh, on their part. What I did find was uh, a lack of documents here to, to document expenditures and works uh, that, that not only the, that all vendors used. Um, and I just want to reassure the public we are we are investigating it. And when the when the um, when the uh, forensic audit has begun, all these allegations or comments or suspicions will be investigated. But to act upon them now without any evidence or just suspicions because they um, they came and did a lot of work for the school uh, in the construction area uh, is kind of unfair. These buildings here in Linares, I don't have to explain to you, are all very old. And if you have a building that's old, you're going to have electrical problems, you're going to have plumbing problems every time you turn around. And, and they have to, I was talking to the, the head uh, custodian here uh, tonight, and uh, they, before, before I got here, they made uh, changes in the maintenance staff to uh, try and get plumbers in here. They had, in, in the last uh, week, they had five problems with sinks. Two sinks fell off the wall. They, they had a couple of sinks where they, they, they couldn't operate the, 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 uh, the houses anymore. And they got them fixed. So they, they were out disrupting school. So what I, what I ask of you is have a little patience, wait for the video audit, but before you jump down and try and uh, totally criticize someone, have some, have some facts. Thank you. So much. Um, you know, 
now that we were showing that on the document that the board had this wrong, so just want to Okay, so it's still saying at 25 and based on the base. It's my practice. It's right above 25 is what you need. So that was, the, that was the clarification. That's why it's. So what is the new number? Above 25. Okay. Thank you. That's the number. Michelle Miller. So I feel bad that I didn't see this with my own son, and I'm very upset by this. 
So now I think time is missed. Not that we can't catch him up, but I'm very disappointed. So now I am myself looking for things to catch him up. But these are simple things. I had a wonderful meeting with um, Ms. Bordino and Mr. Rizzo. So things are in place. But now I wonder, why were, why were things not put into place? So I do want to have further discussions and further meetings with administration. And things are, are happening. Other things I want to see better communication is with academic calendars. Not the ones that you guys approve and that you guys are going to be working on. I'm talking about digital things. Because now we are in a digital age, these are things that are free and cheap and are at your disposal. There's no excuse. It doesn't cost a dime. These are things that we have already and I want to see happen. The web page manager is terrible. I want to see it be better. I took some time over the weekend while I was writing my midterms because I'm doing some fundraisers for the 8th grade committee at Roosevelt School. Horrendous. They're absolutely horrendous. I want them cleaned up. I want some continuity. It's free. It's doable. We can make it better. to one of the teachers. I know she travels from school to school. Sent her an email in early December. Haven't gone, she hasn't gone back to me yet. Doesn't matter. This is my time. Feedback to parents are so important. I want to improve the kids' education. This is free. It doesn't cost a dime. I want to make it better. I want to make it better now. I don't want to wait till next year. This can happen right now. I want to bring back the after-school programs. I want to see this happen now. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, we're definitely going to be looking into the phone issue that you've spoken with. Um, and a couple of things I want to know with regards to the web page and technology, and what's free and how to communicate. Uh, if you noticed tonight, one of the things on the agenda is the list of the committees. One of the new committees we have is technology committee uh, because we do recognize that our website is not as user friendly as we would like for parents. And also, in general, a lot of the information needs to be streamlined and uh, coordinated. So, I appreciate you speaking tonight. Thank you. You know, I guess just to follow up, I'm, I'm, we're definitely going to look into the phone issue because I personally, not that I represent the winners, I myself in the So, I apologize on, on my definitely happening. I will definitely reach out very soon. Um, and yes, just to piggyback on the technology, it's definitely something that's on our immediate radar, not on like long term radar. Um, and, and there has been in the past different statement positions to form the website, but unfortunately it's not a priority for us right now, so um, because we have some other issues. So we have had our administration step by step up and some of our staff members as well to assist as much as possible. But we, we're aware of it's, it's it's a work in progress. Even within the technology aspect itself, it's probably not the highest on our priority list, but it's definitely up there. Um, but I also agree with the implementation of why we can talk about with the bigger workshop, the greater workshop, something which in the course of that talk about at least on a weekly basis. So um, it's definitely something that they want to do. We want to be consistent across the schools, and not just in one building or two buildings, but in all the buildings that specifically involved. Well. So Second grade, one school in the same thing in second grade in another school. So uh, we, we share a lot of the same ideas, but in my head, I can't get over the whole thing. So that's probably what I'm going to do first. So thank you.
We have finally made it to the agenda. Um, so, new board of business. So we're going to be um, any board member who takes exception to any of the following list of actions in the category of business may so indicate now in a separate motion for each of the accepted actions to be entertained. And I have a motion uh, for. For number three, because we already did one and two earlier this evening, three through number nine. So I need to start. All right, so that's seconded by Jim. Okay, roll call. Mr. Ramstad, I'm four. Mr. Bizzotti, four. Ms. Alkiri, Four. 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 Hi everybody. Uh, really quick before we hit the uh, finance part of the agenda, I just want to, you're going to see here we're going to be approving a corrective action plan. Uh, this corrective action plan has 30 findings. The auditor, as he said, 15 of those. I just want to know. 15 of those have already been implemented and or completed at this time. Back from October of 2017 with our new business administrator. Uh, this will be posted right on our website, the corrective action plan, along with the audit. So, you know, back in 2017 of October, we already made changes to uh, correct a lot of the stuff that was found by our current auditor. Uh, also, I just want to mention that the teacher's contract expires on June 30th of this year. The board will be entering into negotiations with the teachers. So that's something that's going to be coming up. And um, the finance committee will be starting to meet and start, produce, uh, start working on the next year's budget, 2019-2020. And uh, that's that. So we hit this. Any board member who takes exception to any of the following list of actions under the category of finance, facilities, and district planning committee may so indicate now, and a separate motion for each of the accepted actions will be entertained. I make a motion to that the following finance facility and district planning committees, numbered 1 through 29, that's 1 through 29, be accepted. Mr. Rabascato. Four. Mr. Pizzuti? Four. Mr. Salkiri? Four. Mr. Andronopoulos? Four. Mr. Paradino? Four. Mr. Tabuna? Four. Mr. Donovan? Four. Ms. Keith? Four. Any board member who takes exception to any of the following listed actions under the category of Education and Curriculum Committee may so indicate now, and a separate motion for each of the accepted actions will be entertained. Hearing none, I make a motion that one to five be accepted as read.
Mr. Woodall? Four. Mr. Donovan? Four. Ms. Keith? Four.
to make the public understand that no new money is being sought, just being reallocated? If we got to that point, of course. Okay, but well, we're trying to do that before we get to that point. Can I clarify? I want, I want to say that, that that's what the goal of the board is, is that we don't have to go back after vote and that we stay within the spirit of the referendum. What we ultimately want to do is, with the money we currently have, stay within those needs, but reallocate it with the schools in a way where it's most efficient to our current needs. Um, basically because at this juncture, when that referendum was made, that that was what, in 2016. Those plans are what were prior to that. A lot in our town has changed. And uh, and in that spirit, moving forward, what we did recently also was a you know a, a demographic study to have a better idea of how to move forward. So uh, like I said in the statement, and again it was a statement, so maybe if I speak a little bit clearer and you know a little more familiar, what we're doing is we're going back kind of to the drawing board in, in a way, uh, to understand now with in mind, keeping in mind that the new school could be a middle school and maybe that would suit our needs better. And that with taking that lead, looking at our options with the four lower schools that are within the referendum. And in that process, once we're given those options, we're going to share that with the public to figure out how we can all move forward. And we're all on the same page. Part of the reason for the meeting with the commissioners was, yes, ultimately we can decide what that building is after we've had it for a year, but we all would like to be on the same page. I think one of the meetings, you had asked about what was happening with the new school. And we had said, we are obligated for us to work with the, you know, the town and, and the greater community in moving this project forward because it's only in the best interest of the district and our students. So that, I think that's a plain way of saying what the statement was earlier. And um, another question. Now, I know this is after the forensic audit and they're saying somebody is found on the board to have been at fault for one of these statutes that are in violation. Is the board insured, and are we able to go after the insurance to help alleviate the loan that we have taken from the city? Um, sure. So um, there is certain fidelity insurance that the Board of Education is required to maintain, uh, whether it's the bond for the superintendent of the business office. Okay, so there's there's that kind of fidelity casualty loss bond. Uh, insurance that the board does maintain. In terms of other types of insurance that might be triggered under this, whether it's the errors and omissions or something along those lines, um, it's school leaders, it, the name of the insurance is it's school leaders line of insurance. Uh, could there be a claim made? I don't, I can't say that now. As, as I've said before, I need to see where we are. But school leaders insurance is there, which is sort of a DNO or ENO type insurance policy, as well as the fidelity bonds that secure both the board secretary, business administrator, I believe superintendent, but I know this position is actually a bonded position. Um, but again, I couldn't tell you if a claim would be made in the future once until after you know we've gone through the process. Okay, and if it's found to be people who have left the district. <coughs> But we're insured. Well, we're here to say we are going after the insurance that we can. Are we able to go after the insurance policy if it was a former employee of the district? Well, and I, and I, and I don't want to speak erroneously because I don't know if it's a claims coverage policy or if we have to, you know, what what exactly the circumstances are under that particular bond and or policy. So I can't answer that. What I can say is that in light of certain other issues that have gone on, we have notified the carrier on, on other items. I can't, you know, at this point, whether or not they'll provide coverage. We're not there yet. Okay. Thank you. Okay. too much money to build a high school which should have been built and the high school be made to new a middle school 
if you said it cost too much money to build a high school, will it cost less money and what's being built now be less money than a 789 building? Can you repeat that? <laughs> you said that it can't be a high school because it would be too much more money, correct? That's what I was told. Okay. Personally, I think it should be a high school, and this town would come up with the rest of the money or whatever, but now there's a big going down. <coughs> the guys are building a 7, 8, and 9, because you could make the high school a middle school, which would have been the best possible thing. Well, now if we're going to change it from 7, 8, 9, which we're paying for that, to a 6, 7, 8, do we get a reduction now? Because it's going to not be a 7, 8, 9 building, a 6, 7, 8. Kind of reduction. Well, would it be less sums? Would they change the plans midstream? Like, how are they going to change the They're not changing any plans. Leaving the ninth grade in the high school and moving the sixth grade up requires no changes. Okay, so how many students does the new middle, the, the middle school hold? If you do a six, seven, eight, how many students? Is that building going to hold you and as making it a 678? I'm going to turn it over to the superintendent, but just, okay. just basically, it's, it's the same number of kids in each grade. Yeah, yeah the buildings um, will be able to hold that amount of students with plenty of room, and that would potentially be an issue. From, again, from what I've been told as well, um, from some studies that I think were going on when I started, that, um, How many kids are in the high school now? Uh, 756. Yeah, changes every day. So the new school will help hold how many students? The new school can hold approximately 750, I believe is the number we were told. So like that that's the problem is we would be good today. Um, but we might not be and that's kind of one Would you do in the six seven eight to accommodate the fact that you were short on the referendum? for your project for the schools. So that's how you're going to try to get out of your um, deficit. No, because I don't, I'm not really sure if, if you're saying that for, for me, my, my biggest reason. Well, I mean, that's what you were talking about at the meeting, that because it would be 678, you were able to um, not do the total amount of what the referendum was for the 19 million. You'd be able to, like, uh, you know, I understand what you're trying to go hand in hand, but I think I'll start with this and, and we can, I can answer more. So 789, whether it's 789 or 678, you're talking about approximately the same number of kids. Sometimes you have a grade that's got a, little, a lot more or a lot less, but that's usually like rare, but sometimes that you have and a also, And that's also a grade that amounts fluctuates time goes yeah. on. So, so either way, it would still be three grades. So the amount of students in the building is not a problem. Whether it's 79 or, or a 9, 11, 12 high school setting. That's totally different. Could the state have improved a, a new high school there? I mean, was there any um, acreage of land or whatever accommodating to have made that a new high school? I was not, I was not involved in that, in that kind of study, but just in, in general and brief conversations. I think there were a lot of other issues that brought up. If you made that building the high school, uh, where would the athletic fields be? They build the one down the bottom. Well, it, it's, uh, maybe that's not the best possible way. The bottom line is that the people that have more expertise in this area than I do uh, basically said that in, in talking with the high school principal, our input was that the, the, the high school would be best served. Uh, as a high school in its current location. Um, other engineers and architects said it would cost an extra, uh, a lot of money to all the, uh, and that would be a burden to the taxpayer uh, to try and convert um, that building to a high school. So, mm -hmm. so that's how that's how it was the. I know it would have been nice if we had a new high school made the middle school. I mean the high school the middle school. Yeah. Yeah. to get Mr. Vidoli still sitting there when he's going to be installed. The poor guy.
guy sitting here with a broken nose. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, the appointee uh, has to be by a public vote. So the public vote has happened. However, he cannot be sworn in until he passes a background check. So as soon as that is done, I mean, it's our, it was our intention to try to be able to do this earlier to get the ball rolling because it's only a year term and we're already less than a year. Um, so the swearing in will most likely be, um, we would like to accommodate him and get him on board as quick as possible. So we would swear him in, but then also have a swearing in ceremony, hopefully in February for his family. But as soon as that background check is done, which hopefully is very quickly, we will have a ninth member and the eight full healthy board. Thank you. Before this one. Before this one, I think we've had the same one over. I, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but we've had the same one for at least six years prior. Seven years. Six, 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 I'm going to say six or seven six, years. The same auditor year after year. Maybe we rotate them out every couple of years. Well, we well like I, I don't I think going forward, yeah. like Mr. Bliss yeah, is yeah. here, I, I think that that is the key. Yes, right. thank you. Yeah, Mr. Bliss uh, does very extensive work throughout New Jersey with other school districts, and, and that's very helpful. And I, I appreciate his time tonight. He did a wonderful job. So, yeah. Thank you for your questions.